Hi, Carolyn Carney here at Palais and Arts, and I'm standing with the wonderful Barbara Martin in front of her two pieces. Um, she will be in our portrait show, which runs from January 19th through March 12th. Barbara, can you introduce us to your pieces? Oh, thanks, Carolyn. It's really a pleasure to be here. <laughs> um, these two pieces are products of my imagination. I tend to work completely through an intuitive process. So I start with no plan mm -hmm. and begin making marks on the panel. Mm -hmm. And gradually the shapes and the planes and the lines organically develop. Mm -hmm. um, this one, obviously, I had in my mind a sort of a teapot or a wonky coffee oh. pot. <laughs> and I was thinking of a very tall, slim, seated glass vase that's a very pale pink. Oh. And this was probably, in the back of my mind, a bottle of uh, liquid medium that artists use that's mm -hmm. paint without any cement in it. Yeah. And this was a, just a random mug, because if you have all that, you have to have a yes. mug. Because if you're going to have a teapot, you must have a mug. Yes. <laughs> and as you work, I draw an outline of each uh, piece first, mm -hmm. and then begin to think, where do they actually intersect? Yeah. What is the geometry of it? Geometry is the only math I can do. <laughs> <laughs> but when you begin to do this, it quickly becomes complicated. Yeah. So then I'm moving by what color would look the best mm -hmm. next to these other colors. And by the time you've composed them and interwoven them all, mm -hmm. you can get something pretty interesting. My favorite part of this is right in here. I agree. Yes. The way that you've uh, used the vectors to create like the overlap of colors is really beautiful. And true to anything that's translucent, you've even nudged this a little this way, like what would happen when you're looking into a glass mug, which I think is really beautiful. Um, what, uh, I know these are mixed media and acrylic. Um, what, so you start with drawing, uh, I believe you use a uh, colored pencil and then you, you... I start with a number two pencil, whatever oh, okay. I can yeah. get my hands on. It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or mm -hmm. regular, it's not an artist pencil, just like a regular school pencil. And I'll begin to sort of sketch in the shapes. This one, I was thinking of a table mm -hmm. where a group of artists had been having coffee and they um, they get together and bring sketchbooks and yeah. little things that they can work on out into portable things, mm -hmm. maybe not even what they usually do. Mm -hmm. For me, I rarely use a sketchbook. But for a little meeting of artists, I'll bring a sketch yeah. to have something to do with my hands. Yeah. And I thought about the things that each person had chosen for their beverage or their water container mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, it's, it's really fun when you watch a group of people, you get a sense of their personality by what they bring. Mm -hmm. Or if there's a group of mugs and you get to just pick the one you like best, which one they pick. Right. And there's certain people who always pick the same one. <laughs> My sister Sarah. Yes. So <laughs> these are sort of, you know, this this is actually that tall vase again. Oh, I, I, I can see that. Long <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, this is a salt and pepper shaker. And when you look at the old fashioned ones from a diner or whatever, and it has mm -hmm. all the fancy glass on it, little ripples. Yeah. And I get, I, I'm not looking at it necessarily, I'm drawing it kind of like this so that I can't see Very it. intuitively, yeah. And then, but you can kind of tell what it is, or this is one of those, what, what are they were the fancy coffees that maybe they still make them, that came in a little tin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And before yeah, yeah. Starbucks got big with flavored coffees. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have a friend who used one of those to carry things in. That's so great. So it's just kind of, and then you have to have cake for your coffee. So of course you do. Of course you do. It's It makes it more satisfying, and it feels like a luxury. Yes, a special occasion. Well, I, what I like about both of these pieces, you were talking about layering and um, more so in, uh, in that you work intuitively. This is still a very, like, uh, it's a composed. Somewhat, yeah, composed. Whereas this, you allow your uh, viewer to move around the table mm -hmm. and notice things. You've even interestingly sequenced the numbers and things like that. Um, and I think that's interesting because we don't actually, we, when we're observing things, actually move through and we don't necessarily go, oh, I'm looking left or right or something like that. Um, so I find that really fascinating. I'd also, I'm very curious, how did you, there are numbers and uh, next to all of these objects, what are 
You just intuitively, just yeah. Random. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's truly random. So that's and so I um, sometimes, depending on how I felt the shape and line was working, I would use the is it the numeral or the number? Oh yeah. Some I wrote it out in text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which is cool. Well, I was going to ask you. Um, both of these are very strong on contour line. Yeah. yeah. And um, and your contour lines are beautiful because. On the one hand, and the one to my right, um, you are have the contour line, and it it defines objects. The contour line in the one on the left is just as strong, but you kind of like let it melt and come back, yeah, and melt around. and come back. So, could you talk a little bit about um, line in your artwork? I think all of my art, whether it's sort of representational. I consider this more an abstraction, but it's yeah. you can tell what yes. it is. Yes. Yes. It's a nice to mixture of both. Purely abstract, where I really am playing with color mm -hmm. and shape. And then I do some that are black and white and they are sort of surreal figures mm. which are drawn and painted. Okay. It's always about the line for me, because a lot of the work that I do is just by hand, not with a brush. Right. I like you know, you know, this was probably my finger. Oh, that's so interesting. So it's very, it's almost sculptural, but flat. Yeah. And it's, it's a light texture. If you feel on here, you can feel where the different layers went. Yeah. You can actually feel it, especially up in here. It's almost bumpy. Mm. Do you start, so you start by sketching, and then um, I'm guessing that, then I'm guessing that you add the uh, acrylic medium that's the color, primarily the color. No. Can you talk about sequencing? Yeah. Uh, I draw with uh, just a regular number two pencil. I might just draw this one. Then I'll take a water-soluble pencil. I call okay. them watercolor pencils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I worked for Binny and Smith. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There was so, Crayola, so I know. So which this uh, orange line, for instance, is probably watercolor pencil. And you can also, if you look up close, you yeah. see I might have started making this handle orange. So I outlined it in orange watercolor pencil, but then mm -hmm. I changed my mind. So yeah, I like that there's a tracing of the journey that you took that in both of them. It, that's sort of the pentimento effect where you can see where mm -hmm. I changed my mind or where it was pretty tentative, but as I went along, I decided, yeah, this really needs to be here. There's quite a bit of that. You can see the original pencil line. You can see different colors of uh, watercolor pencil in there. There's also a water-soluble pencil called Ink Tense, okay. which uh, you draw with. It feels like a regular old colored mm -hmm. pencil when you write with it. But you get it wet. And it really electrifies the color, and mm -hmm. it seals it, so it stops okay. moving, which is why it's called ink tense. Mm -hmm. And you can paint over that, and the ink will not move anymore. Okay. But with regular water soluble pencil, if you paint over it with water, get it wet, mm -hmm. that It'll, color will move. Yeah. So yeah. Continue, like, continues to melt. Yeah. So um, probably like in here, there was pink or red or orange watercolor pencil yeah. that I got wet, and it moved it around. I'm curious as to how you're able to keep such clear, crisp, like writing and delineations of line um, with the color of like uh, what do you Some use this with your was, medium? There was white paint smeared on top of colored pencil so that it bled to blue. Okay. And then I took another pencil and drew and it. went back in. Okay, so you're so layering I scratched on top down of to each the other. Blue yeah. Okay, or that makes a lot of sense. Been Okay. Leaving its own color on top. Yeah, your use of materiality, uh, we were talking about this earlier uh, because we, I was nervous about a demonstration, but I'm really glad you're explaining the process because you are using pencils and, and acrylic medium and panel. Lots of people use those in different ways, but yes. you're using it in a very specific way. For me, it's almost cultural. Cool. Yeah. And I like. And you can feel, you can see that. Yeah. And I'm sure you can feel that mm -hmm. in the right. same way that if you if you ever have the pleasure of touching a Renaissance painting, um, they would go and go right into the gesso yeah. and, yes. or the plaster, yeah. and then you you could still feel. There might be a spot I think um, like this eight, and maybe where I wrote on my table spot with regular pencil towards the end. I may have gone all the way down to the plain wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you also explain, like, um, 
I know people who use some of these materials mm -hmm. and they tend to use it on paper sure. or they will even use it on canvas. Yeah. And you're choosing wood panel. Could you could you tell us a little bit more about your choice of support? Like, I have painted on paper and <clears throat> canvas and panel. I do my black and white paintings on plywood. Mm -hmm. um, I like the feeling of the, the of a oh. panel. If it's canvas and it gets a little boingy, I just feel like I'm not getting. I can't because get you're almost, it's almost like you're car you it's almost like you're carving into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't like the give of can I feel like you're not. I I think it feels insecure. <laughs> I'm that's, already that's, a, that's a great look. <coughs> okay, you've made me laugh to a point where I'm coughing now. Um, but I will agree with you. Never be sorry for making us laugh. We love laughing. I'll staple canvas on the wall. That's oh, what I was going to say because that's what I do. Yeah, she when you paint, when I have it stretched on the canvas, I'm going to use that when I hit it with the brush because I want the bumps. The bounce, right. But I, I if I'm which is really infuriating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really. No. <laughs> so, so this was a very practical choice because it had no bounce and also it allowed you to get almost that sculptural carving element that you were speaking of earlier. Are these sealed with, um, they're so smooth and glossy. Right. And is that the medium being sealed and glossy? Yes. Or are you Terrific. <laughs> There's probably a, a, in, in this background area. I remember going back and forth on what color would be best. Would it be this sort of beautiful shrimp pink, mm -hmm. or could should it be more of a blue pink? Yeah, like a rose pink. I guess yeah. you say shell pink. Or what, what, so you can see different places where I kind of left a trace of what I had at different times. Yeah, it like makes it, it more atmospheric. Well, yeah, for that also, area. It also is. Um, it gives you a narrative of like it, it remains it as an history. artifact of it gives like you the history. Yeah. yeah. So uh, once I decided that's probably white over a colored pencil to get this merry mm -hmm. kind of billowing feel, you know, there are little splotches of lighter and darker all through it. It's uneven from mm -hmm. distance. It looks pretty solid, but up close you can tell. And then I would have coated the entire thing with the medium mm -hmm. to make sure that everything is sealed. Nothing's gonna move, and then I can put varnish on top. Okay. Yeah, the, you did a beautiful job in making a unity uh, of background um, for this, and your background never pops at me, even though. It stays back. Yeah, it stays back beautifully, and that comes from the right from the desaturation of color, something that's not easy to teach students. That well, if you look, I mean this. Orange, mm -hmm. this orange is pretty bright. This is sort of medium. This is backing off, and this is way back. Yeah, it's all related to the thing. Yeah, and, and yet people will go and see, look at that, and see that. Um, oh, it's a pink background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and with, yet it's so subtle and nice. Yeah, it looks like it is on a tabletop. Yeah, with such bright color, sometimes it's hard to keep them from popping forward, and you've really expertly done that. And then in this piece, I think it's interesting because you've worked it in a way that we do get depth even in this. Like this seems to sit a little bit back from these. And um, it's interesting because it's not a standard perspective because each of the right. objects has a different perspective. Right. Yeah. But that kind of almost like feels like a memory where things float in and out of your mind at different depths and at different times, which I, which I also think is very atmospheric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just have one last question, and that has to do with, um, I find your paintings supposed to be very animated. They're still lifes, and, um, and, and we... Yeah, they do. Yeah. So can, can you talk a little bit about how you think um, you get this sense of animation and, and life into things that are, that also, in a lot of ways, remain quiet? It's partly the memories and the kind of the spirit and the soul of the people who were there. You know how you get, if you watch the police procedural, they always have the DNA evidence. They can tell who was there uh -huh. either because they get spit off the glass or, you know, fingerprints yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like that, but I don't think it's the physical realm. I think it's more of a energy that stays. 
Yeah. It's like if like a metaphysical your, kind of thing. Your grandmother's favorite teapot sits on the counter. When you see it, you think of her. It feels like maybe she's even there with you. Yeah. It's kind of like that, but I think it goes on every day. Which makes it so beautiful that you're using domestic scenes and domestic objects that um, I think all of us can relate to, and that's where you get the you get the warmth that draws you in well, to, also, to see. I'm really happy to hear you say and that. also the way that you use color, even when you talk about the ones that become more vibrant as you add as you uh, add water to secure them into place. Um, is beautiful and in some ways like memory because in some ways memories are misty and pastel, pastel but also bright and vibrant um, when you remember. Those splash moments. I call yes. them place moments. Yeah. Oh, very nice. So, uh, thank you. If you're doing a body of work, that's the perfect, you know. That's the perfect yeah. title. Yeah. Title. Sorry. <clears throat> well, that's, I call, these are part of the series that I have sort of sporadically ongoing. Every once in a while I get in the mood to do one. Mm -hmm. Um, I called it the crockery series because mm -hmm. oh, yes. crockery is like everyday dishes. Yeah. Not your fine china, not your champagne flutes. Well, it could be. Yeah, right. could be, but crockery is the perfect but term for that. Yeah. It's sort of like what's on the table after everybody gets up and goes home. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm so glad so and so is here. Which I believe is what you said in your artist statement that, like, which, yeah. if you get a chance to read Barbara's artist statement, it's, it's very lovely. It's, lovely. it's on the website. It, yeah, it will be on the website. Um, Thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you. Thank so, you for your wonderful questions. So, oh. and, uh, and we're really excited, and we hope everyone will come see Barbara's work during our portrait show from January 19th through March 12th. Thank you so much. Thank you.